What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. There, and we're all set, ladies and gentlemen. Taylor Roberts. Give me a hell yeah. Thank you, sir, for, for joining today. Do me a quick favor before we begin. Please properly introduce yourself, plug and promote anything and everything. Let me know whereabouts in the world you are at this moment. So my name is Taylor Roberts. I sing and play guitar for the band Riding With Killers. I'm also the guitar player for Taproot. And uh, if we're gonna shamelessly plug stuff, I just joined the String Joy artist roster like two days ago. So really happy to be starting a new partnership with them. Um, adding to the already amazing list uh, of, of Gibson guitars, Mesa Boogie amps, Seymour Duncan pickups, uh, 64 audio in-ears, and puck hockey up here in Michigan. And I am currently in Detroit. Puck Ham hockey. Tramic, to be a little more specific. Puck hockey, is that is that what I think it is, or is that like actual sponsorship? It's a clothing brand. Yeah. Oh, cool! I've never they've heard of them. That. that sounds dope. That yeah, sounds they're dope. badass. How long has uh, how long has Killers been a band for? So, uh, I mean, like I started this when I left the Gulf Coast in 2018. Um, it was just me, um, and I went to Madison, Wisconsin. Um, to work with Matt LaPlante, who I had been working with previously with Cather System Wildfire. And uh, we ended up programming drums and bass to three different songs that I had done. But then I ended up involving uh, Dave Coglin, um, Tim Krukowski, um, and James Laskew, and um, basically started working in the background. And I would say late 2018, or really, yeah, late 2018 sounds about right, early 2019. Um, but like, I was just kind of working quietly in the background like um i had just quit the the band that i had toured the entire country with and you know we were on the radio we were doing some of the danny wimmer festivals like we were we were on our way to doing the right thing and then it was like nothing and so um i essentially got to work in the background and uh we just kind of recently started playing out live more and more since we just put the first record out so uh, we, 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 I, it's been an idea. So I would say, what is this? Like, uh, six years, almost five and a, I'd say five and a half is, uh, is, is accurate. Regarding when you just mentioned right now about, about the previous band, just kind of coming to a halt and nothing happening. Can you, can you give some band advice to, to bands that are watching that, that kind of don't understand? Like, what, what exactly happened where it just stopped? Like, what did you learn from that? Well, I mean, the band tried to continue on after I left. I, I basically got to a point to where I was not happy anymore. Um, I, and I mean, I mean, I quit the band that I started in my parents' garage when I was 14. You know what I mean? Like, it was enough for me to quit my own band. I just, I wasn't happy uh, creatively. We weren't meshing anymore. There were different ideas about how things were needing to be done. And, um, you know, like, it, it broke me, man, because um, I, I essentially knew that I had to walk away. Otherwise, if I would have stayed, man, I, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. I wouldn't be doing the things that I'm doing. And um, it, it was the right call, even though, I mean, it was it was like a divorce, you know, uh, one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. But it allowed me to take some time off that I really needed to reexamine myself um, and, and dig a little deeper into myself, you know, to to become a vocalist, to start doing you know, more, just more within, within the band. So, um, you know, it was good and it was bad, but, um, it was for the right reasons, I would say. So after that, how, how does Taproot come along? How do they find you and you're the perfect fit? So, um, back to that same band, um, the first real national tour that we ever truly did was opening for Taproot in 2013. Um, prior to that, I had played a club show with them at um, the Soul Kitchen in Mobile, Alabama. 
and um, got to know Phil and Steve. Um, they had, uh, and you know, I didn't really talk to Mike that much that night. Um, and their drummer, Nick, I didn't really get to meet him, but Phil and I kind of, we were like, Hey, like we're cool. And we ended up hanging yeah. out, um, for, throughout the whole night. Like after we got off stage, after they got off stage, went and had drinks, hung out. And it was just like, Holy shit, I'm hanging out with Taproot. This is cool. And fast forward two months later about, um, uh, Catharsis was playing, uh, and we were like, we were one of the opening bands, but we weren't the opener opener, but we were doing CPR Fest, um, and that was 2013, and then Taproot was on that same bill, and I walked up to Phil, and I was like, hey, man, do you remember me? And he was like, yeah, Taylor from Catharsis, and my jaw went through the fucking decking and down to the floor below, and I, because, <laughs> you know, you never think that someone that you were watching on MTV growing up at you know 10 through 12 14 years old is gonna remember your name much less your very stupidly spelled and hard to pronounce band name <laughs> uh, but somehow he did and then um you know we exchanged numbers and uh he got me in touch with their management and um he really liked the band and brought us on board and next thing you knew we were on tour together and um I always say I got spoiled on that tour because they were so amazing to me and, and the guys. And I like I had so many questions and they were so patient, but they answered them all. And they were just really, really great dudes. And, um, you know, we just we formed a really good friendship. And then and uh, Dave Coughlin had joined the band on drums at that point. And then he and I became like he's the older brother that I never got to have. Um, we basically started playing Call of Duty together right after we both got off tour, and we're still doing that 10 years later, 11 years at this point. Um, but uh, basically, um, I maintained my friendship with all of them throughout the years. Didn't really talk to Steve as much, and, and he's like that, man. Like, even in our band chats, like, we'll randomly get a Steve text out of the blue, but... Um, you know, Phil and I kept in touch and we would have really, really awesome in-depth conversations. And it wasn't even about music and it was about health and food and, and loadouts, general ideas on life. And um, it was never it was I just wanted to be friends with those guys, you know, and um, when I moved up here, um, I tapped Dave to do the drums, which, you know, he did the drums on the first uh, record and um once we kind of got everything done, he started sending all the music to Phil and Steve and and the guys. And he was like, man, like, listen, listen to what he's creating, you know. And they're like, well, where is he now? And they was like, oh, he moved here. He's in Detroit. And they're like, wait, what are you talking about? Like, call him right now. And um, and then I just I got a phone call, um, you know, uh, not this past December, but the the, the previous one to that. And uh they asked me if I wanted to be in Taproot, and I said, fuck yes, while I was crying in the middle of the restaurant. Uh, every, everyone at the table was like, who died? Who's dead? And I was like, nobody. It's great. It's all wonderful. That is a so, cool story. Hell yeah. Um, you know, it was just, it, it was a long time of just maintaining friendships and um, getting along with one another, man. And uh, it, it it, it has felt like a really perfect fit with those guys. Like I, I love Jared and Steve and Phil to death, man. And when we get to make noise on stage together, it's really fun. It feels like something that I've been doing my entire life. And, and, and to piggyback off of that, uh, when I started learning some of these songs, cause you know, I, I knew how to play a couple taproot songs, you know, they, they were one of those bands that as I was growing up, Oh, well, let me learn how to do this so I can apply it to my own technique um but some of the the songs that i had never attempted before like i found myself falling into them very easily and like my hands just kind of knew where to go and it, it was really hard to explain but it it felt comfortable and then um every time we get on stage man it's just it's an absolute blast so that is awesome uh chad can't see it because i have your camera slightly cropped but to your left is that a puffco automatic Dude, you are fucking right it is, sir. I can this tell so... just just from the tip of it, the shape of it. Hell yeah. I used, I've dabbed that, that thing a this couple thing times. This thing is, uh, it's saving my vocal cords, man. Like, I can't really smoke flour much anymore because 
just all the byproducts of the flour. And, and even if I do like a joint or like, like a water bong, just all that, that excess from the flour just sits in my throat. And then it's like, it's, it's like, it cuts me off. Like I'll be like, ah, and then I'll just crack out. But like, um, it, like this it's, I do lower temp dabs mm-hmm. and, um, I feel like I'm smoking less weed, but I'm, it's, you know, it, it, gets me where I need to go and it lasts a little bit longer, but, uh, it's, it's saving my voice at the same time. But I was just, uh, doing a, a string change hangout before this. And I, I showed this on my Facebook live and I was like, please sponsor me. <laughs> Hell yeah. That would be awesome. Uh, I don't know if they, I don't know if they do that, <laughs> but I would like to start that trend. Yeah, that would be cool. Speaking of, I'm just going to take a dab while we're at it. Yeah, go for it. Uh, we're really quick while you do that. Um, I want to do the trivia and I see the hot sauce behind you. So you came prepared but the cool thing about the trivia yes. is, what you, what you got? And it's Tiger Shark Ghost Pepper. So Whoa. I came really prepared. Okay, so you, I, I right. need something hotter. I need something hotter. I got you. I got <laughs> I got some Ghost Pepper and Blueberry Bravado right here that I'm going to do. To do the trivia, though. Hell yeah, that sounds delicious. It, what was it? It was Ghost it, Pepper Blueberry what? It's from a, a company called Bravado Spice Co. But it's, blue, it's Ghost Pepper Blueberry. It's very blueberry-ish. Uh, but also very vinegary-ish, but then it has, like, straight heat at the end. Good, though. It's pretty bomb. Dude, so to do the trivia... See, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, man, I, I'm, I'm a southern boy, man. I, I like I like spicy shit. All right, cool. Is there is there a movie or TV show that if I look up trivia on this movie or TV show, there's no way I stump you because you've seen one of the other so many times that it's impossible to stump you. Let's say I do stump you though, whether you get it right or wrong, I'm going to take a big old swig. You just take a swig. Keep it moving. Yeah. Um, Ooh. So you get to pick. Um, we could do, uh, the 1989 Batman. Or the, Batman the, the original one with Keaton. Yeah, man. Okay. Let me look up. Uh, now, now that I said that, I'm I'm gonna fuck it all up, and like I've got Batman tattoos and everything. But now that I like I'm in the hot seat, I'm I'm gonna screw it all up. What's your What's your is is one of your Batman tattoos your favorite tattoo, or do you have a particular one that you treasure more than another? Um, uh, I mean, this is probably oh, yeah, that one. Joker. And and I just have, but the, it's it's Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. Like those are my favorite iterations of Batman and Joker, just because that was that was another that was a childhood staple. Aside from the 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 eighty nine movie, but you know, obviously, I got to live with the series a little bit longer. Um, but that, that was just that was one of my safe spaces as a kid, man. I can dig it. Well, we're we're about to stump you, but you got to pick Batman from nineteen eighty nine, the first one. How many pounds does Vicky Vale tell Batman that she weighs? She mentions this when he shoots his grappling hook up onto the catwalk. She says, Oh shit. But I, uh, I weigh this much. Is it 120? I'll give you one more guess. It is less than that. 115. 108? That's a stump. Mm. Go Damn. ahead and, and take a swig. I'll look up another one, but I'm going to do it with you. Don't worry. Cheers. Cheers. Woo! God damn, that's good. So we uh we jammed ah. we jammed uh novelty right before you hopped on. Watch the video for it. That song's a banger. What is what does that song mean to you? Because it's a little bit slower and softer than some of the other stuff we, I jammed on Spotify earlier. Um, for me, dude, that it's 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 heartache. You know, like if you were gonna put it bare bones in one one. Word and oh, dude, my eyes are starting to fucking heat up. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, um, but I mean, that was uh, that was my way to deal with heartache. And um, you know, I, I always felt like in in previous relationships that I was just a novelty. You know, like oh, the the weird rocker guy who's all tatted up. Blah, blah, blah. That's that's you know, and not saying that all of my relationships were superficial because they they weren't. That would be super fucking unfair. But there were many instances of that to where I was just a novelty and um, I always felt like I had something more to offer. And um, that was kind of, you know, there, there's so much more to me 
And um, that's in a nutshell, that's basically what it was, you know, um, just being this plaything in a relationship and not having any sincerity of it going anywhere or thinking that I was, you know, worth it. You know what I mean? Like, sure. so um, that's basically where where that one was born from. And, and what's so funny is uh, and, and, and I'm honestly proud of that one, too, because um, I wasn't always a vocalist. And um, it really took me some time to figure out how to write lyrics and how to write melodies. And um, I was very fortunate to have Tim Krukowski and Matt LaPlante and, and James and even and, and Dave, like all, all these guys that were working on the record with me, like they really sat down with me and, and took me to school in a lot of ways and helped me out. And with novelty, like I had the vocal melody, I had lyrics and I brought it to Matt, my producer, um, and he was like, dude, that's fucking amazing. It's great, but we got to rewrite every single lyric. And I was like, ah, you know, like, <laughs> it was like, I, I, I was so proud of it because I was like, man, I did it. Like, I finally brought a cool song. And um, but he was right. And uh, we basically said exactly what I was saying in the original first draft. But we were like well, how can we make this fun and, 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 and more poetry, but also create a story here? And it was like Toy Story, you know, like, let's 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 kind of think of it in a Toy Story vibe. And um, the lyrics just kind of started jumping off the page after that. Like Matt and I had a great time sitting down with that one. And I'm, I'm really glad that he made me do that. Um and 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 we I'm, I'm just glad he made me rewrite everything because it turned out really, really special. So. Two things. When uh, <clears throat> earlier uh, we have a mutual friend, Tommy Kubiaski, who says who says hello. Um, I see what him. else? Tom? I, he's saying hello. But I was on your Facebook page earlier, and I saw something that said like rock and roll painting. What what is yes. what is that? That sounds amazing. So that is my commercial and residential painting business that I own and operate in the Metro Detroit area. Um, aside from music. Uh, my my other trade is painting. Um, my grandfather got me started at the age of four with like model airplanes and model Gundams. Once I finally got to that age, I was like, I'm going to pick my own models. And I was like, Gundam wing, man, because I'm a fucking nerd. <laughs> and uh, we would do like little Star Wars, um, the speeder bikes that they had on indoor. Like I remember we built that one together and painted it and just and went like movie specific with all the colors. It was, it was really cool. Um, so he kind of got me started with like the really fine detail stuff like that. And then, uh, by age 14, like I got a, a pro gig, um, painting in the summertime and, uh, I just, I always really enjoyed it. And then when I started touring, you know, not many places are going to want to have a touring musician working for them. So I, I would always find painting jobs when I got off tour and, and it was always a way that I knew that I could make money because I didn't hate doing it. And, um, but are you, you know, guys, are you guys I, like I blasting, very... blasting metal or, or something like that while they're painting? Like, why is it called rock and roll painting? I mean, dude, I show up to work looking like this. I mean, I've got clothes that are like paint splattered and stuff, but I mean, like, dude, like there aren't many other painting companies around here owned by a guy that's in a professional rock band. And like, I look the part too, you know, like, like, and, and the guys that work with me from time to time, they all, you know, um, they've got tattoos. They, they, they look very alternative and it looks like a rock band is showing up to paint your house. So, um, that's cool. because I mean, dude, like most painters, they're, you know, mid late forties, overweight, pissed. Off. And I, I'm not saying that's true for all of that, for all painters, but there's a stigma and and this is how i stand out in the crowd is by being myself you know um because oh, yeah. like we're painters whites and i've had so many people you, you know we're painters whites you're not a real painter and i'm like what that's fucking <laughs> dumb <laughs> hey so uh me me lizzie and a bunch of our friends have tickets to to sick new world fest next month i know you guys are playing oh we gotta hang out we definitely should uh it, that's kind of the place where like special sets happen, not just the normal set that is played on every gig throughout the tour. Is there any secrets or anything that you guys have planned that maybe you can't reveal, but is is something planned to do something special on that day? 
Dude, I I don't know. We're still working on figuring out a day to rehearse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that'll be something that comes up a couple of weeks beforehand, but um, I hope we do something fun and cool and interesting and special because, um, I mean, it is Sick New World after all, but nothing that I'm aware of. Okay, That's well, done. we'll be sure to to be uh, to catch that set for sure, absolutely, and I, we would definitely be down to hang. But my job is to stump you one more time in Batman, so here we go. You got to pick it. You got to pick it. Do you recall the name of the crime boss that the Joker kills in order to take over his business? Oh my god. Oh, uh, it's like Don Corleone, or <sighs> it starts with a C. That's his first name. It's on the tip of my tongue. And the problem is, is I literally just got done watching the entire series of The Sopranos. So like mob boss names are just <laughs> like flying in and out of my head right now. Oh my God. Um, I think I've watched Sopranos three times all the way through. That show's amazing. Such an amazing, and, and this was my first time watching it. And I was like, oh, my God, this is a perfect time capsule of the late 90s, early 2000s. Like, pff, so good. I used to have um, a crush on, on Meadow for years. Is it Carleone? You are really close. It is Carl Grissom. <laughs> Carl Grissom. One more shot of, uh, of, I actually have a different blueberry. I have a blueberry hell this time. Hellfire hot sauce, Ooh. blueberry hell. Uh, so cheers. What is a uh, what is killer? I did a double because I'm ashamed of myself. Ah, you deserve the torture. I kind of do, man. It's it's <laughs> bullshit. Like I, I feel like somewhere my mom's really disappointed in me. She's like, I knew you were gonna get those wrong. Hey, uh, so what, what does what does killers no have? Son of mine. <laughs> What does Killers have lined up the rest of 2024 that you're that you're allowed to tell us? Well, um, got a few irons in the fire, but we have a date on the 22nd in Pittsburgh with our friends and guides. Which I'm wearing their shirt right now uh, at uh, the Fun House at Mr. Smalls, and then April 7th we're doing a headlining show at Max Bar in Lansing, Michigan. Um, we have another headline date, June 15th, at the Music Factory in Battle Creek. We're really excited about that one. Um, and then we are opening Havoc Fest, which is the inaugural year for them in uh, Jackson, Michigan. I believe that's August 23rd we're playing. And, um, but they, they got Kitty, Cold, um, our buddies, and Heartsick. Uh, Black Note Graffiti, like it's it's gonna be a really fun festival. There's a lot of really great Michigan bands. <laughs> Sorry, um, ugh, that sneaks up on you, man. <sighs> biting, biting the throat uh, right now. Yeah, it just it like it came up like like the back. Ugh. Oh man, that makes it hard to think. Thoughts let's do, let's do a couple of uh, a, a couple of fun questions to end on. Do you recall? This could be any project you've ever been involved in. The absolute worst show you've ever played. Everything went wrong in this one night. Uh, it happens to every band. It happens to every band. Oh, dude! Oh, I'm, I'm just, dude. It's happened many times. I'm just trying to think of my fucking favorite. Um, I definitely. Um. It was so funny too, man. We were playing in Hattiesburg and um, it was CNN music and we were coming out on stage and I literally tripped over the biggest fucking cable and they didn't have anything like, you know, taped down. And so <laughs> I tripped over this huge fucking tube of, of, it was like a bunch of cables just like barreled together and I just did a straight fucking front flip straight on my ass. And it was like right <laughs> when we walked out on stage. And we're like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> Face plant. And then, of course, um, during a solo. Um, this, my the same, this is the same night. This is the same night. Same night. Okay. Same night. 
and <laughs> it goes out completely. And God bless my buddy who was trying to help, but he, he didn't really understand gear. He plugs me into the mute section into my tuner because I had a rack mount tuner at the time, like a fucking moron, um, instead of just being a grown up and having a tuner puddle on my puddle board. Right. I was like, yeah, I'm going to have this really sweet, badass <laughs> Peterson Strobo tuner that I don't fucking need. And um, he plugged it into the. Ro- oh, wait, no, it wasn't the tech, it was my singer. <laughs> Oh, that's even better. Uh, but he basically plugged it into the wrong thing. And so like, I missed an entire solo section. So it was like, we were building up to this great spot and it was just like crap. <laughs> and it just, I don't know, just everything fell flat for that performance. It felt, it, it happens. It happens. Do you have any, uh, any phobias or anything that freaks you out? <sighs> Not really i mean uh, i'd say heights but weirdly enough like i love flying like i grew up in airplanes but like roller coasters and like looking down if you were like 30 stories up looking down like that freaks me the fuck out Uh, especially because i saw a chick die um falling off of a roller coaster and i'm not even kidding you You saw that like you're at the theme park you're at the theme park what theme park was it it was uh, Blue Bayou in uh, Baton Rouge. You can Google it. Um, they, they they shut down the park. I'm fairly. I, I know it was shut down. I don't know if they reopened, but um, so I was there with my friends um, John and Nicole Necessary, and um, we were uh, John liked to ride roller coasters, and I didn't, and we were waiting on him, and uh, they would send out one and then 30 seconds would go by then another coaster and it was two people in front two people in back so you're back to back to somebody so there's four people total on a coaster okay and um he was going and then the one right behind him and it's really unfortunate they shouldn't have let her ride it because she was too big like she just was the the guard didn't close and the fucked up thing about this coaster is that as it was going down, dude, this hot sauce is fucking me up so bad. (laughs) And um, as it would go down, it would spin. So the coaster was spinning as it was going around this track. Well, it spun on that first curve, and we we saw her fly out. And, uh, yeah, so that's why I don't fuck with roller coasters. I I mean, I don't blame you. That's That's insane. It was wild, man. I was like, you know what? It would be my luck that the one day I'm like, you know what? Let's do this shit. Yeah, I'm, you know. Final final question, sir, and I appreciate your time. Uh, aside from music, aside from family, what makes you happy more than anything else? Do you have any collectibles, hobbies that you do? Uh, also, aside from painting. Uh, does, does, does Meg count my dog? Sure. What kind of dog? Uh, she is, come here, Meg. Come on. She is a Sharpay Pity Mix that I found on the side of the road about nine and a half years ago. Come here. Come up here. So you're a hero. Come up here. You're saving animals. You're a hero. I, I wouldn't say that, but this is my baby. Oh, let me see. If hey, Meg. Can... Hey, Meg. But she has been my very best friend for the last almost decade. And she's seen me through a lot of weird and amazing times. And um, just, I don't know, man, when I see that dog, when I come home and I just see her wagging her butt, like, that she, like I know she's stoked to see me. And when I wake up and she's there, it's just, it's perfect. I totally so, get it. I, I'm, a, I'm a dog lover. Uh, I have a dog too. That's awesome. Well, well, Taylor, yes, this was back. a lot of fun, man. I'm excited to hang uh, uh, next month for, for Sick New World Fest. Riding with Killers is badass. Yeah, I can't wait. You seem like an awesome human being. We definitely got to burn one at the show. And yes. uh, just safe yeah. travels, brother. Can't wait. If, if it's okay Thanks, with you. Man. We'll, uh, we'll see you next month, bro. Same to you. Can I can I put this on YouTube in the morning and then uh, send you a link? Yeah. Go for it. Hell Let's yeah. do it. Appreciate you. Taylor Roberts of Riding with Killers. Top round. Yeah, hell yeah. Cheers, man. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.